uh, for me, it was totally my mom. My mom was a royal pain in the rear end. Um, and uh, and she not only rubbed me wrong, but she rubbed lots of people wrong. She was a very difficult personality. So I actually learned a lot about how to deal with difficult people. Uh, it could be your your husband or your wife and uh, and or, you know, a fellow relative or just a good friend, I guess. Of course, if it was a good friend, the question would be, why are you good friends with this person if they're so difficult? Anyway, so we're going to discuss that on our next call. So uh, that will be May 30th, next Thursday at 8, 8 p.m. Central Time for about an hour, maybe longer. My last call was about an hour and a half. Uh, so depending on how many people, you know, call in and how many people we actually get to talk, uh, you know, would, you know, determine how long the call is going to be. Um, and it is $10. I am charging that. My time is worth something, and, and hopefully yours is too. So uh, if you want to be on the call, then uh, I just encourage you to go over to StacyLharp.com, and you can sign up today. And once you sign up, uh, I'll have your name on a list in your email, and I will make sure I email you the day of the call with the login information for the call because it's a, it's a call. Okay? All right. Okay. So here is uh, the email I got from, um, from David. And, uh, David, thank you for sending me the message. I appreciate it a lot. It means a lot to me, actually, when people take the time to actually write me and tell me what they think. Um, and I know the spirit in which you wrote this was to basically say in a loving way, um, you know what, you might have blown it here. Uh, and to which I would say, you know what, you're probably right. I probably have blown it a time or two uh, sitting behind this microphone trying to explain my point of view <clears throat> about something. So anyway, David starts his email by telling me a whole bunch of nice stuff. And uh, that was very sweet of you. I appreciate that. This is called the sandwich effect, everybody. When you want to, you know, uh, go ahead and, and give you know, some feedback. It's always good to, to butter them up first. So they put butter on that first part of the bread, and then you put the meat, which was the criticism in the middle, and then afterwards you put more butter on the other side. And so you got a butter meat sandwich. That's a joke. Okay, anyway, <laughs> so David says some stuff. But um, he does say here, uh, and I'm going to read what he says here, uh, but I think that your obsession with hating Obama is practically pathological. And he says, don't misconstrue me. I firmly believe that millions of spiritually ignorant people, Obama is deceived on the issues of abortion and homosexuality. Of course, God's enemy exploits Obama's ignorance to spread darkness in the world. And to that, I would I would completely agree with you. <clears throat> However, I think you really crossed the line when you said that you have documented proof that the man has practiced homosexuality. I believe you are sinning and breaking the commandment, thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor, unless you have undoctored photos or you have seen him engaging in such, such acts. You really have no right to say such a thing on the air. Okay, so that's basically the gist of the complaint. Uh, or concern. Well, and actually, um, and David, you, I know you went on to say a whole bunch of other nice stuff, and 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 also express your concern that if homosexuals are listening to the show, uh, that sometimes some of the things that I say come off hateful, and uh, my anger, my frustration, and my outrage um, are not necessarily, um, you know, they're fleshly. And first of all, I would say, oh, my gosh, are you kidding me? You're absolutely correct. You know what? I I am the first person to admit that there are days when I go off. <laughs> I get very passionate, and I will say things that I probably wouldn't say, uh, you know, otherwise. Uh, I can assure you that I say things that uh, I would never say on air, off air. To Randall, <laughs> and uh, you know, and and it's it's an interesting uh, point because uh, when you're on air a lot and you're used to it, sometimes you forget that there are maybe people listening who who uh, who might not know you. Maybe it's their first time, and 
they're listening to you and they hear you say something and it hits them the wrong way. So, you know, the Bible talks about the one who is perfect in his speech is kind of a perfect guy, right? Well, that wouldn't be me. So, um, and I am not above being corrected, obviously, which is what you've done. So I would admit there are times where I need to pull back and not say stuff as harshly as I do. Um, and that is something that I've, you know, been working on as far as, uh, uh, <laughs> as far as, you know, certain things. Like I used to use the term sodomite quite a bit. And even though that's a biblical King James version of the term, um, I do know uh, that, that a lot of people find that offensive. So I haven't used it as much. Um, I, I do, like yesterday when we were talking about uh, the Department of Justice, and they were, you know, I was reading the guidelines. This is what I try not to cave to. I try not to cave to the political agenda and the pressure uh, from the culture to conform to what they, you know, you know, do. You guys in the chat room, <laughs> stop it. Uh, I confess my sins every day on this show. Come on. Anyway, so, um, but anyway, I don't want to. I don't want to conform to what the world is telling me to 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 do because are you kidding me if then that means that i'm becoming more like them and i'm i'm saying things like like using the term gay yeah everybody uses the term gay the homosexual community wants you to use the term gay they don't want you to use the word homosexual and i remember when i went to a counseling uh conference particularly it was a doctor a psychologist lady who was who was saying that we should never use the word homosexual because it connotates sex. And we want to remove that, that whole thing from the vernacular of the, of the world. I refuse to do that because that's kind of the point. <laughs> that's what makes somebody a homosexual. It isn't their feelings. It's, it's who they want to be with sexually. And that's the same gender. So in that regard, um, uh, I would say that uh, uh, you're right as far as, you know, sometimes I, I blow it. That's that's totally, totally true, and I'm the first to admit it. And believe me, I've wrestled with it, and I struggle with it. The other thing, though, I struggle with here, too, and you make a good point. You make a, a point that makes me wonder if I'm valid. It makes it, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? Whether or not, okay, you made the point that, that if a homosexual is listening to me, I might not be the best example, or they might not feel safe enough to come to me if they want to be a Christian. So, and my response to that is kind of twofold. My first response to that comment is, is you know what, this show isn't designed to bring homosexuals to Christ. That would be my first response. I don't sit behind here every day and hope and pray homosexuals are listening to me so that I can hammer them with the gospel. That's not what I do. My gifting is to be an exhorter, to call out the evil. Um, and as you said, you even think I'm anointed to do that. So so that is the one thing. On the other hand, it doesn't mean I, I don't want homosexuals to come to Christ. Of course I do. But I'm aware that the Holy Spirit is the one, the Father is the one that draws people to himself. When I struggled with same-sex feelings myself, and believe me, I did when I was a kid, and I know – uh, you shared the same thing when, in your email here. Um, I understand the feelings. I do. That's why I'm so passionate about about exposing the things that I expose because I understand the feelings. I fit the, the mold perfectly to have those feelings. And thankfully, um, I was able to go to a counselor and talk to them and with my faith, as you have, begin to understand, oh, this is why – uh, you know, I feel this way and be able to resolve that. And I you know, obviously have no problem with that at any point now. Now, your other comment, though, I think this is really what got your ire up, is my comment about Obama, Obama being a homosexual. Um, I remember that you had uh, sent me a message prior many months ago and you had told me, uh, basically the same thing, where's my proof, and all that other stuff. And whether or not I'm bearing false witness or not, um, in my heart, my spirit reveals to me that that isn't the case. 
Um, all you have to do is Google Obama homosexuality or, or Obama and bisexuality, and there's a plethora of pages out there with documented uh, commentary on there. In fact, I want. In fact, here's the thing: because you brought this up um, for fun, I I went ahead and I I did that very thing. And just today, actually, it was yesterday. Uh, this was posted by Right Wing Watch. I want you to hear this. Hi, friends. This is Coach Dave Dobbenmeyer at News with Views TV at News. Com. And I'm going to say something. I said a lot of radical things, but I'm going to say something really radical now. I think it's time for President Obama to come out of the closet. <laughs> yeah, you heard me. How about that he come out and admit he's the first openly gay president, or better yet, openly bisexual president. You know, there's some history there. Um, and Pre- uh, President Obama, seen, his face seems to really light up when he begins to talk about the gay agenda. He thought he was so proud when that Jason Collins came out of the out of the closet and how proud he was of it. Well, I think it's time to have the first gay president come out of the closet. Okay, so that's Coach Dave Dobbenmeyer, who I've had on the show before. Um, and he is a little in your face. And in the Huffington Post, that... That audio is actually on the Huffington Post website for you to hear. Um, Also, I want you to hear a little bit of a speech he gave to Morehouse College. I think it was just yesterday he did that. And he mentioned something very interesting that I am actually a little bit surprised by, but here's what he had to say. Today, Frederick is a family man and a working man and a Morehouse man. And that's what I'm asking all of you to do. Keep setting an example for what it means to be a man. best husband to your wife or your boyfriend or your partner be the best father you can be to your children okay the whole homosexual community jumped up and down when they heard that part that Obama said be the best man you can be to your boyfriend or your partner okay so the President of the United States threw that in. Here's his comments when Jason Collins decided to reveal he was a homosexual. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you something about Jason Collins. I had a chance to, to talk to him yesterday. Uh, he's, he seems like a terrific young man. And uh, yeah, I told him I couldn't be prouder. Uh, you know, one of the a, a extraordinary uh, measures of progress that we've seen in this country uh, has been uh, the recognition that uh, the LGBT community deserves uh, full equality, not just partial equality, uh, not just uh, tolerance, but uh, a recognition that they're fully a part of the American family. Okay. So, I mean, these are just comments within the last couple of weeks, you know, actually last couple of days that the president has made uh, in regards to this issue. You know, Jerome Corsi has also been on the show a number of times. In fact, um, he's I, I can't have lost count on how many times Jerome has been on the show. And he is actually one of the ones that has brought this to the attention of so many people. Um, uh, Larry Sinclair uh, had revealed during, in I believe it was in 1999, that he said that he had uh, two homosexual encounters with Obama when Obama was the state senator. Um, it's common knowledge in Chicago that this, that Obama was a, a part of the underground uh, LGBT community there. And uh, there is an article over on a website called vice.com, B-I-C-E dot com, uh, that actually documents all of this stuff that I've said numerous times. So, uh, in fact, there is a... a it says here, Donald Young was a black choir master who was killed execution style in Chicago in 2007. And rumors were that Young had been having a homosexual relationship with Obama and was murdered so the story couldn't get out. Um, believe me, it wouldn't be the first time 
somebody in government murdered somebody to keep us to keep something uh silent. Uh Jerome Corsi has also talked about uh the wedding ring that Obama wore during his youth and it was believed then that that wedding ring was because he was in a relationship with another man. Um and Jerome Corsi, even though he has never uh published any information specifically about his uh, uh Obama's children, there are rumors that the children Michelle has with Obama are not their children. And uh you know, so anything is possible here and you know, even that that point is kind of out I mean the whole thing seems crazy to me, but this is politics and uh there's nothing new under the sun. So um am I pathological when it comes to this particular thing or my hate for Obama? No, um I, I would say I guess it depends on who you are. I I strive to report the things that other people aren't going to report and there's more than one source on this story that suggests that he has been involved in multiple relationships with other men. Um and the fact that um, not only magazines like Newsweek have have kind of mocked the whole situation by saying he's the first gay president, and the fact that he has the largest LGBT population in his his administration, and the fact that he has done everything possible to make sure that the LGBT community uh, has more rights and and uh, privileges than any other administration, actually combined than than all the previous administrations. So. Um, uh, I don't have any personal pictures and, you know, I don't know that that would mean, you know, what I have to say is, is illegitimate because I don't have pictures. Um, but I do have more than one source and just as a quote, real journalist would, would report something. And I believe Jerome Corsi is a real journalist. Um, I think the evidence, the quote, circumstantial evidence, um, is, sufficient to suggest that the president is at least bisexual. So um so I'm not gonna stop saying that because you don't like it. Um but I I wanna thank you for uh you know for uh pointing out that you think I'm bearing false witness about the president. And that's your opinion. I have my opinion so we can we can disagree on this, right? So um but anyway, so thanks for listening, and uh, um, I hope that answers uh, your question to me. And uh, and I will try, like I said, I, I will try to um, temper some of the other stuff that you mentioned. Introducing CountryWhispers.org, the place to go buy your unique handcraft soaps, Wickless jar candles and warmers, and to find a wonderful gifts for the holidays and all year long. You'll find decorating items to enhance your home decor, natural beauty products, and more at countrywhispers.org. Visit countrywhispers.org today and add a special touch to your home. Countrywhispers.org, your home away from home. The Before I Formed You Foundation is a nonprofit organization co founded by renowned Christian artist Ron DeCiani and his son Grant. The purpose of this foundation is to reach every abortion clinic, crisis pregnancy center, and OBGYN in the U.S. to celebrate life. If we can turn just one mother's heart toward God and save an unborn life, what is that worth? To learn more about how you can help with prayer, donations, or a partnership, Go to www.formedyou.org. That's www.formedyou.org. In the primeval history of Genesis, an ancient war began between the seed of the serpent and the seed of Eve. Fallen angels called Watchers begot a race of giants called Nephilim, their goal. To stop the bloodline of the promised seed. But God had other plans. Chronicles of the Nephilim is a biblical fantasy series of novels that charts the rise and fall of the Watchers and the Giants in the stories of the Old Testament and in between. Noah Prime Evil, Enoch Primordial, Gilgamesh Immortal, Abraham Allegiant, and more to come. By author and Hollywood screenwriter Brian Gadawa.
Available in Kindle and paperback at Amazon.com. Go to ChroniclesofTheNephilim.com and enter a world of ancient history and biblical imagination. That's ChroniclesofTheNephilim.com. Next on the Pray in Jesus Name show, Dr. Chaps will pray about these important issues. There's a critical story we're following at PrayInJesusName.org, and that's how the IRS now admits they violated the constitutional rights of Tea Party patriots. Not just that, but pro-life groups and Christian groups. Even Franklin Graham, the son of Billy Graham, runs the Samaritan's Purse. Well, here's a statement from the Tea Party spokesman. The IRS now admits they violated our ability to exercise our First Amendment right to free speech. But a simple apology is not sufficient. Reparation for violating the constitutional rights of United States citizens. Therefore, the Tea Party patriots reject this apology from the IRS. We need accountability. Somebody needs to be fired about this, and let's pray for that. Visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, to sign a petition to stop harassing the government with the, uh, excuse me, the Christians with the IRS. God bless you in Jesus' name. This is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps. Please join me every Saturday for two full hours as we report the news, discern the spirits, and pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. And then on Sunday, again, I invite you to join me for one hour Bible study that will help you understand the will of God for your life. That's three full hours of important programming every Saturday and Sunday right here on the Active Christian Media Network. And please support Randall and Stacey Harp at ActiveChristianMedia.com. You are listening to On The Wall Radio on the Active Christian Media Network. Okay, one of the other things David said that I totally appreciated, he said he found me to be insightful, dedicated, endearingly childlike, and humorous. And uh, I appreciate that. (laughs) Uh, The childlike part, I think that comes out too much, doesn't it? Like, oh my gosh, (laughs) I can can do something. Oh, and by the way, speaking of that, I want to let uh, Scott know Yesterday, I picked up the uh, sock monkeys at Cracker Barrel, and uh, me and Grover, we we went over together, and uh, Grover stayed in the car, and I didn't let him go in the store with me, but I did. I I finally I finally got them, and uh, um, I want you to know I'm going to take a picture of them later, and I'll put them in our premium membership. I still haven't named them yet. And there was a nice lady in the Cracker Barrel store who actually brought me the right one because I wanted the one that had the USA on it, but I didn't see it. And as some women like to do, they like to always, you know, try to sell you more. Anyway, she came over. She goes, did you see this one? I was like, no, I didn't see it. That's the one I wanted. Anyway, so uh, so I got a, a light blue one and a brown one. And uh, I feel like a little kid again. So <laughs> so anyway, thank you for those. And uh uh, I have totally enjoyed them already. In fact, there there was one that actually had the little monkey paws that you could actually, you know, put over your eyes, like see no evil, hear no evil, that type of thing. And uh, I almost got those. But anyway, I didn't because really I don't have the money to be spending right now. If you didn't give me the money, I wouldn't have done it. So just want you to know uh, I did and uh, had $7 left over to spare. So uh, thank you for uh, giving me that for a present. I appreciate it. And if anybody else wants to give me any more money so I can buy other presents, feel free. <laughs> All right. So uh, let me let me okay stay on this homosexual issue just for a little bit longer, uh, and then we're going to talk about Christian persecution. They're kind of tied in together, but anyway, you know I came across this story over on theblaze.com. dot com, and uh, I want to read you. I, I don't want to read you it. I want to play you the audio. This is two minutes, so just listen to this. And then I'll comment afterwards. There's growing reaction tonight over an Ohio gym teacher fired from her job at a Catholic school for being in a relationship with another woman. While the school is digging its heels in over the incident, some of the students are standing up for her. NBC's Stephanie Gosk has our report. Carla Hale does not like the news cameras. I don't want money. I don't want fame. The gym teacher would prefer to be at Bishop Watterson, the Catholic high school in Columbus, Ohio, where she taught for 19 years. But last month, Hale was fired. Shock. 
I literally could not even sit down. Hale lives with her partner, Julie Uncafer, something she never talked about at school. But when her mother died in February, Hale included a mention of their relationship in the newspaper's obituary. I told Julie what I had done. She instantly questioned me and she said, are you sure you want to do this? A parent of one of the students read the obituary and sent an anonymous letter to the Diocese of Columbus, a coach at a Catholic school living in a relationship in which the church is clearly against, amazes me. Days later, Hale, a practicing Methodist, lost her job. The diocese would not grant NBC News an interview, but a statement says the Catholic Church respects the fundamental dignity of all persons, but also must insist that those in its employ respect the tenets of the church. A group of students at Bishop Watterson jumped to the teacher's defense. An online petition has more than 62,000 signatures. All right, Kendall, here you go. Including Kendall Meachams, a junior at the school. Maybe it's like my generation that does, has no problem with people being gay. Like, we don't see any problem with that. These recent graduates from Watterson say the decision to support Hale is inspired by Catholicism. Part of Catholic social teaching is that when you see an injustice, you see a discrimination, you're called to stand up. One of the reasons, Hale says, she stayed at the school her whole career. Watterson's just a great place to, to, to be. You love the school. I do. I love the school. What the gym teacher really wants to do is go back to work. Stephanie Gosk, NBC News, Columbus, Ohio. Okay, so that was over on theblaze.com. And uh, there's a couple things in the in this story I want to just point out. Uh, number one, the woman said that she... Uh, she never wanted to become famous or anything like that. So my question, and it's not meant to be a mean question, but my question is, well, then why is this in the newspaper? Why did you bring this to the press? It was it was obviously her that brought brought it to the press, right? Uh, so she op- she decided to put in the her mom's obituary that she was, you know, a, a lesbian. Obviously, it, it's kind of hard for me to believe that in 19 years at this Catholic school that no one knew this woman was a lesbian. It really is. It's that's that's quite a long time to be hiding a, a you know, a partner in my opinion. But here's the thing that this made me think of. When I was in 8th grade uh and um or was it 7th grade? No, it was 8th grade. When I no, it was 7th grade. I was in junior high. <laughs> it's been so long ago. I almost forgot what grade it was. Anyway, um, you know how in the olden day, days, Tam, Tammy, you would know, in the olden days, um, you know, you had to change clothes when you were in gym, right? Everybody, We all had to take showers and, and all that fun stuff. Uh, Tammy's going to write a smart aleck response, I'm sure. Yes, you're welcome. Anyway, um, so anyway, I remember when I was in seventh grade and I was in junior high. It was the first time uh, that I had to take gym. And we had to change our clothes, right? Okay, well, yeah, we all hated it. We all had our lockers and blah, blah, blah. And that we all hated it, especially as a, a prepubescent teenager, especially for girls, you know. I mean, not only are you having your menstrual cycle for the first time, but you're also developing your female parts and all that stuff. But anyway, I remember that it, it was rumored that the PE coach – in my seventh grade class was actually a lesbian. And I remember the outrage about it because, oh my gosh, here is a lesbian coach, a lesbian gym teacher. And if she is a lesbian and she's watching all of us girls undress every single day, well then what's that doing for her? Okay, so fast forward now to the 21st century. This woman in this Catholic school is a gym teacher and 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 she is, you know, uh, she's a gym teacher. So in that Catholic church school, do over the last 19 years, were the women, were the girls, did they have to change their clothes? And if so, was this woman watching them? I mean, I think this is a reasonable question. You know, I have to say I commend the woman for not blabbing about it at, at her school. That's good. Good for her. She should stay at home. That's where all sexual behavior should remain, at your house, behind closed doors. Nobody should know about it, right? That's that's private. That's privacy. Anyway, so um, after 19 years, she gets fired. Um, 
because because she's violating the Catholic Church's doctrine. All right, well, duh. Hello. So I mean, she's and and she knew it the whole time. That's why she kept it a secret. So there's deception there, and that's called lying too. Okay, which is also a sin, in case you didn't know. And according to the Bible, lying is considered an abomination as well as homosexuality. It's literally called an abomination. Um, so it's easy to feel compassion. I mean, I feel compassion for her that she lost her job. But at the same time, I'm thinking, well, you're the one that put it in the paper, and apparently your partner basically warned you not to. That's what it sounded like to me. Um, I think the parent that had an issue with it should have just put their name on their paper. But I could understand why that parent wouldn't given the retaliation from the LGBT community. Totally could understand why that parent didn't want to be known who that was. And, of course, given the fact that this is a lesbian gym teacher, um, you know, her whole job is is around girls. So, I mean, hello. (laughs) You know, and it's it's at a Catholic school. Now, here's the other thing, too, that I thought was interesting in that package uh, was the younger uh, generation were basically saying they didn't have any problem with with the whole homosexuality thing, to which I say, good job brainwashing. I mean, that's exactly the, the indoctrination that's taken place over the last 30 years, probably longer than that. Um, so, uh, yeah, interesting. And... Uh, Yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, so, all right, so let's talk a little bit about Christian persecution because I uh, read today that Pastor Saeed, who we know is in prison, in Evan Prison, has been there for a while. According to CBNnews.com, he says uh, he's thanking people for praying for his freedom. Uh, And uh, here's part of the article. It says, American Pastor Saeed Abedini's family had another successful visit this week at the infamous Evan Prison. Consequently, Pastor Saeed was able to get a new letter out to his wife, Nagma. It was a letter of hope and joy over the positive effect his imprisonment has had on the global church. Quote, I heard that the persecution, my arrest, and imprisonment has united churches from different denominations, from different cities and countries, and that would never come together because of their differences, he said. Saeed, who was arrested for sharing his faith in Iran, sent the letter for his family and supporters who gathered recently to pray for him on the Christian day of Pentecost. He noted, despite the daily beatings and internal bleeding, he still draws hope from knowing that the churches have united together in prayer to put one request, his freedom, on one day, Pentecost, before God. You don't know how happy I was in the Lord and rejoiced, knowing that in my chains, the body of Christ has chained together and is brought to action in prayer, he said. Pastor Saeed added that uniting in prayer for him should be uh, only the beginning. How uh, Now, how beautiful it will be if the church would be united and fight for the salvation of the world, whose life is in danger and who are bound in chains of Satan, and to fight for the salvation of the world, a world that is heading to the way of dis- destruction. He also made a point to admonish the church, saying, With the same passion and the same way that you're praying and fighting for my freedom, we need to be praying and fighting for the salvation of the world. In response to his personal condition, the 33-year-old U.S. citizen wrote, I will also be freed from my chains through prayer and strength of the grace of God. So that is the letter from Pastor Saeed, uh, which is really encouraging, you know, very, very encouraging uh, to get that. Okay, Uh, let's go to a break a little bit early, Randall, and then um, I have a couple of other things I want to talk about, some persecution happening in Nigeria, uh, as well as an update from the Middle East uh, from Gary Lane and CBN News. What's on God's Sin List for Today by author Tom Hobson. This book is designed to help you find solid answers to the question, which parts of the Bible are timeless and universal, and which parts are only for the people to whom the Bible was first written. What's on God's Sin List for Today is available at Lifeway Christian Bookstores and online outlets including Amazon.com and Barnes & Noble. What's on God's Sin List for Today by author Tom Hobson. Introducing CountryWhispers.org, the place to go buy your unique handcraft soaps, wickless jar candles and warmers, and to find a wonderful gifts for the holidays and all year long. 
You'll find decorating items to enhance your home decor, natural beauty products, and more at countrywhispers.org. Visit countrywhispers.org today and add a special touch to your home. Countrywhispers.org, your home away from home. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Faith on Earth is a new book that appraises the effectiveness of Christianity from its inception through rapid growth in the early centuries and up to its recent decline in strength and influence. Is there hope for the future? Faith on Earth scripturally lays out the background and rationale of God's plan for the world and how the individual born-again believer is integral to making a difference. Faith on Earth by Lou Pamakis from Nordskog Publishing and available at Amazon.com and other book retailers. Faith on Earth by Lou Pamakis. In the primeval history of Genesis, an ancient war began between the seed of the serpent and the seed of Eve. Fallen angels called Watchers begot a race of giants called Nephilim, their goal. To stop the bloodline of the promised seed. But God had other plans. Chronicles of the Nephilim is a biblical fantasy series of novels that charts the rise and fall of the Watchers and the Giants in the stories of the Old Testament and in between. Noah Primeval, Enoch Primordial, Gilgamesh Immortal, Abraham Allegiant, and more to come. By author and Hollywood screenwriter Brian Gadawa. Available on Kindle and paperback at Amazon.com. Go to ChroniclesOfTheNephilim.com and enter a world of ancient history and biblical imagination. That's ChroniclesOfTheNephilim.com. You are listening to On the Wall Radio on the Active Christian Media Network. Okay, welcome back. Did you think I forgot? Randall's like, are you going to say anything? That look on his face was like, hello, I unmuted it for you. Uh, Anyway, yes, I'm back. I'm paying attention to myself, I think. (laughs) Mm, Better me than somebody else, right? Okay, so uh, I want to read you part of an article uh, from CBN News regarding the violence in Nigeria. Uh, unfortunately, and this is so sad, you know, I started a petition over at FactsCongress.com, and so few people have signed it. It's very irritating to me because we are funding Boko Haram. Our government is funding it. And the audio I'm going to play you in just a few minutes here, will you'll hear a little bit of frustration from Gary Lane from CBN News. But uh, according to CBN News yesterday, they put on their web page, Christians remain the targets as Nigeria violence grows. Christians warn that they are the main target of ongoing violence in Nigeria's uh, restive northeast. Meanwhile, Brigadier General Chris uh, somebody, I can't say his last name. I'm not even going to try. It looks it looks really hard to say. Anyway, a military spokesman says its forces have successfully engaged a large number of heavily armed terrorists during the last few days in an effort to curtail the violence. To date, 17 deaths have been reported, 14 suspected Islamic extremists, and three soldiers, 20 others have been arrested. The spokesman also says Boko Haram extremists are fleeing to Nigeria's borders with Cameroon, Chad, and Niger, uh, though that has not been confirmed. Nigerian President, good luck, Jonathan, is attempting to regain control in Adamoa, Borneo, Borno, rather, and Yobi, or Yob, I'm not sure. Uh, by putting those states under emergency rule. The president has called for the arrest of anyone suspected of working with the insurgents and ordered his forces to occupy any building housing extremists. So that's the whole article. I actually have the audio, but I'm not going to play it for that one. I want to play the audio for this other one, though. It's about five minutes long, and this is going to give you a really good background as far as the increasing Christian persecution over there in uh, all these other countries. And so uh, listen really close. This group Hezbollah this year. Rioters burned down an evangelical church compound in Sudan, terrorists bomb an Orthodox church in Libya, 
Muslim radicals murder hundreds of Christians in Nigeria. These are all examples cited in the State Department's new International Religious Freedom Report for 2012. Persecution of Christians is ongoing around the world today, especially in Muslim countries. For more on the latest persecution hotspots, George Thomas spoke with Chief CBN's Chief International Correspondent, Gary Lane. And joining us now for more is Gary Lane. He's our senior international correspondent and works with the voice of the martyrs. President Obama met with the, the president of Burma, first time in 60 years yes. that the Burmese president has come. Historic. Here, here, very historic. Uh, but Burma is, is, continues to be a country of concern. Uh, is the United States moving too quick in these economic relations? Well, those who are working Burma, the relief agencies and especially the Christians say, yeah. yes, the U.S. is moving too fast because the Burmese government, while it is freeing people, political prisoners from mm -hmm. jail, it is cracking down on Christians, particularly the ethnic Kachin people okay. who live in the northern part of the country. Uh, burning churches, tearing down churches, forcing many of them into forced labor, and really oppressing uh, the Kachin people, and the vast majority of them are Christian. Another country is Egypt. We've been reporting on this in the last 24, 27 months since yes. the fall of the Mubarak regime. This particular report faults the government for, lack, for the lack of protection against uh, uh, for Coptic Christians. What's going on here? And that is accurate for them to fault the government for that. For example, uh, the radical Muslims will go and they'll attack a church, mm -hmm. try to destroy destroy a church, burn it down, or level the church. And guess what? Christians will call the police. Nothing happens. Yeah. The police will arrive many hours after the incident, and then they'll arrest the Christians. Mm. The Christians say, hey, what are you arresting us for? We haven't done anything. Uh, we were the victims here. But this happens time and time again. Most recently, we saw an attack on St. Mark's Cathedral. That's the home of the Coptic Orthodox uh, uh, Pope. Mm. And that that has never been attacked in the past, yeah. never in the history of Egypt. The government, army, police fired tear gas and attacked that church when some rioters came out front. And, and, and most of the time, the authorities just watch the, the entire process going. Well, many times yeah. they just watch what's happening if they're there. Yeah. If they arrive on the scene, they'll watch and allow it to happen. Mm -hmm. So this is a very accurate uh, indication of what is happening in Egypt today. Another country that you are very familiar with, Gary, is, is Sudan. We've reported over the years, the attacks against Christians in the Nuba Mountains. But now there are reports of persecution in the capital of Sudan, in Khartoum. Yeah. What's, what's up with that? Khartoum, is, it's a mess right now for mm. Christians. Churches have been closed. The government wants all Christians out of Sudan. And where's that pressure they, coming from? What's going on there? Well, it's from the, the Islamists and the, in, in the government. They would like to see all of the Christians uh, go to South Sudan mm -hmm. because they believe that is a Christian state. Right. So if you're a Christian... Since they have a new country now. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, about two years old now. Yeah. So go down to South Sudan, live there. Mm. But the, Christianity has been in Khartoum for centuries. Right. It was there before Islam. Why should they have to leave in, in their homes that they, they've been there? for generations. Mm -hmm. Why should they leave, close their churches, and, and go down to the south? They want to remain. But uh, unfortunately, we're seeing almost like a genocide against yeah. Christians in the north. Wow. You know, we have done so many stories on these, on these, on these reports, on these yeah. commissions, yes. when they come out with the reports, uh, trying to, you know, it's, it's obviously something that's mandated by the U.S. government. What is your sense? Is the, does the U.S. government really care? Do they even read this report? Do they have any impact on the countries that are stipulated and, and, and highlighted in the report? I don't think the U.S. has done much about it, the countries that are highlighted in, in these reports, um, other than putting pressure on those governments. They yeah. raise it as an issue. For example, Vietnam several years ago, the U.S. Council on International Religious Freedom listed them in their, in their annual report mm -hmm. on their watch list mm -hmm. as, an, as a, a nation of particular concern. The Vietnamese backed off for a while, but then when we back off and the pressure lessens, guess what? Yeah. They're back to the same old business again, right. persecuting especially Christians in the mountain areas mm -hmm. uh, in that country. So I think it puts pressure on, but are we going beyond that? Are we imposing sanctions because of religious freedom uh, rights uh, not being there. Yeah. Um, That's not happening. No, it, no, it isn't. It yeah. isn't happening, George. So what good is this report, really? Mm -hmm. It raises awareness, but beyond that, there's not a lot of teeth behind it. Yeah. Well, we do need to continue to talk and highlight these various sure. situations and countries yes. that where people and are And we afraid. do that here yeah. at CBN News. We yeah. try to do that regularly. Gary, thank you, sir. Okay. Appreciate it. So, I don't know about you, but just, you know, I heard Gary Lane's frustration uh, in, you know, in that report, because here you have this big report, right? 
and is telling the truth about what's going on, and yet our government, our wicked, evil government, is not doing a darn thing about it. And it it drives me so crazy. Uh, It really does. It drives me crazy because, you know, as Christians, we're supposed to uphold justice, you know, you know, we're supposed to love justice and give mercy, right? And uh, when and 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 when you see Christian persecution all over the the world, and you know that those are your brothers and sisters, you know, hello, uh, then and, and you're trying to tell your government, hey, you know what, you're funding these terrorists. And they're like, la, 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 you know, they're like, they put their fingers in their ears and they're, nye, 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 you know, <laughs> I'm, that's not very articulate, is it? Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. They don't really care. And Gary Lane's basically saying, what well, good is this? You know, it's not worth being, we printed it because they're not, they're not doing anything about it. Um, and that's not good. And that's, that to me is a sign of a government that uh, it has some problems, you know, it's, it's not cool, you know, and there, he was talking in there about Sudan. And how out of the northern Sudan, uh, they're they're basically killing the Christians and they're telling them to get lost, go over to South Sudan. You know, Randall and me, we sponsor um, a child in the Sudan, and um, his name is Peter. And, uh, you know, so I kind of have a little heart for Sudan a little bit because, you know, I I know this young boy uh, who I've adopted and, you know, through this ministry uh, is there, and you know there are Christian relief organizations and stuff over there. I have a picture of him on my fridge because you know I remember that uh, that this little boy there, he's heard the gospel and he's been helped, uh, and yet that land is just completely decimated, you know. And then Nigeria, you know, we've had on here uh, uh, um, Emmanuel Ogebe talking about what's going on in Nigeria and Amber Walda from Jubilee Campaign talking about that. And it's like, you know what? Uh, trying to get our government to wake up and say, uh, give a rip about these other people. See, that's what drives me nuts, especially about the left and the fascist left. It, it, it's, oh, yes, we're all about equality and we're all about this, this, and that. But um, when it comes to trying to help other human beings in the world that that they are intentionally targeting – it's like it's like snoozeville you know it, it's like yeah, it just drives me crazy you know we also have uh persecution continually going on in uh in florida and not in florida why do i say florida in <laughs> yes there is persecution in florida i know somewhere uh in china china florida the same thing right uh I don't know why I said that. That's weird. Anyway, if you go over to uh, ChinaAid.org, you can always read about what's happening in China because Bob Fu, uh, who founded that, he he himself was a persecuted Christian in China and escaped. Uh, I had the blessing of meeting him once in person and talking to him. Actually gave him some tips on certain things he can bring into China. And uh, anyway, but um, there is now an update about the blind Chinese lawyer Chen uh, Gua Sheng, I'm sure I messed that up, uh, about his how his family is uh, being persecuted after he campaigned against forced abortion, right? Because uh, remember in China they have that one-child policy? And, and think about that. You know, they're basically killing off all the, you know, the babies there except for one, and they have an unbalanced population now because of it. Um, anyway, other places you can go are like Mission Network News, uh, and I would actually encourage you to go over there every day. They have, uh, they usually update their website every day. Right now, they have uh, um, highlighted uh, on the front page: "Small Oklahoma town deals with aftermath of monster tornado." And of course, we have the church who are on the ground and continuing to help uh, what's happening uh, there in uh, Oklahoma. And You know, I don't know if you guys saw this, but there was another uh, story of a teacher who admitted to praying during the tornado. Um, And, you know, I bring that up to make because I think it's interesting that out of all the news out there that you could report, that theblaze.com and some other places have picked up this story that a teacher actually sheltered her children and prayed out loud that God wouldn't kill them, basically, (laughs) that they would be protected um, and that in her head, you know, her thought was, 
I can't do this, but I'm going to anyway. And uh, and now there's actually calls to uh, from I think it was the mayor of uh, Moore County there, uh, who's trying to call now for for new buildings and houses and schools to actually have underground bunkers. Which on one hand is kind of a good thing. I mean, if you think about it, um, I think that in in Oklahoma especially, um, you know, there should it would be interesting to have new houses uh, that all houses should have underground stuff. Um, I know ours here in Tennessee doesn't though. It does, doesn't it? No, doesn't. Uh, that would be a lot of work, you know. I think. But anyway, it should be interesting to see what happens there. Just know that they're they're still the, the church is still on the ground and and helping those who are the victims of this stuff. But anyway, back to the persecuted church. Uh, don't forget to pray for the persecuted church. And in here in America, I'm going to bring up something so obvious. You ready for this? This is so obvious. This is one of the biggest news stories right now on on TV uh, and radio, and that is the IRS scandal. You know, the government, the IRS, and how the IRS has targeted Christian organizations and conservatives and the Tea Party. That's Christian persecution uh, here in America. And, you know, I was watching, I'm trying to remember if it was Fox or the Weather Channel. I can't remember. I think it was the Weather Channel. Because, yeah, it was the Weather Channel. Because I remember thinking how annoyed I was that they got all liberal. I was like, this is the Weather Channel. <laughs> They're not supposed to be all political. They're supposed to be just talking about the weather. But anyway, there was a woman who was talking to a guy, and they were talking about how um, the funding, uh, how some Republicans refused to fund uh, the Sandy uh, disaster coverage stuff because there was pork in it and there was some other stuff attached to the bill that, of course, Republicans didn't want money going to. Um, so... Anyway, I don't, I just totally forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Call that the middle-aged menopause fog. That's what I'm saying it is, and it's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Anyway, so uh, also I want to let everybody know today is Janet and Craig Parcel's 42, uh, 42nd wedding anniversary, if you care. Uh, you know, I think that's a good thing. Janet and Craig have made it 42 years. How Craig did it, I don't know. How Janet did it, I can kind of see. Craig's a nice guy. And Janet's a lovely woman, <laughs> so happy anniversary to them. And uh, anyway, um, and uh, tomorrow, just so you know, we have an interview scheduled for the show uh, with uh, our um, our uh, person that's going to talk about uh, technology. So that should be fun. And I'm looking forward to it because I like technology, just so you know. I really do. And uh, so we're going to do that. So anyway, I hope, uh, I hope today's show... Uh, Makes you crazy for God like my friend Chaps. And by the way, I want you to hear this really fast. It sort of defends uh, and defines mental illness a little bit. It says, if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are of sound mind, it is for you. In other words, if we're crazy about God, they're going to call us crazy. But you know what? It's for God. I'll be crazy for God. You going to be crazy for God with me? There you go. I love Chaps, don't you? You're going to be crazy for God? Well, I'm going to be crazy for God, too, just so you know. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And then Friday, hopefully, Randall and Hal will save me from myself, and they will be our, my lovable co-hosts on the weekend on Friday. So that'll be good. Anyway, don't forget, go over to Facebook.com forward slash Active Christian Media. Go ahead and feel free to like the page, like my Daily Grover page for Grover as well. He has now 70, 70 whopping fans for Grover, my dog. He's so popular. And uh, I guess that's it. All right. Okay, that's it for today. Everybody, have a good day. And uh, go honor your king because he loves you. Thanks for listening. On the Wall Radio is a production of Active Christian Media. Please visit www.onthewallradio.com for more information on how to connect with us on Facebook and Twitter and to use our services to promote your product or service to the conservative Christian community. 